So next up, we have Pradesh Paramezwan speaking uh, out. Oh. I think you need to stop sharing the screen. Can you stop? Yep. <laughs> so, no. so Pradesh yeah, will be presenting on using aspect-based sentiment analysis to classify attitude-bearing words. So just a heads up, uh, if you're on Zoom, so you might just want to reduce your volume because I'm just going to sound like a, like a boom box, right? So just a heads up, people who are hearing through Zoom. Right, um, kia ora koutou everyone. Uh, I'm Pradesh and today I'll be presenting on using aspect-based sentiment analysis to classify attitude-bearing words. Such a mouthful, long title. Before I start, um, just a show of hands if you've heard of University of Otago. Mm, okay. Few. I thought of just taking one slider and uh, this is where things are supposed to work. Okay. So, where's Otago? So, Otago is located in Dunedin. Where's Dunedin? It's in the South Island. Where's South Island? It's in New Zealand. So, that's our campus. It's really beautiful. Uh, you can hashtag Instagram it. Um, it's spectacular. But I'm not here to promote about New Zealand, about Otago. I thought of just sharing where Otago is located. So folks, today my topic will be on um, appraisal. So appraisal is a framework um, created by Martin and White in 2005 that allows linguists to classify on how people make judgment about people and objects. Of course, it goes beyond that. I've just really simplified it here in this context. Example, I was fortunate enough to meet the Prime Minister of New Zealand, um, Ms. Arden. Um, when she came to the university, and I said, the Asian in me is like, oh, let's let's take a selfie, right, the Prime Minister? So I took a, a selfie, and I made the statement. I said, oh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand is a very capable leader. Now, you may agree or disagree with the statement. That's that's entirely up to you. But what I just wanted to share with you is on um, where does this fit, right? So this is the appraisal taxonomy. Uh, so there is on um, this first level, whether it's appraisal or not, then you have the other three, which it talks about engagement, attitude, graduation, but I'm more interested in attitude branch, which is effect, judgment, appreciation. And we decided to focus on judgment. The reason why is that in 2020, um, I did participate in the Alta Shad task um, organized by Diego. And we were looking into categorizing given sentence, like for instance, um, he is old fashioned. We call that normality. Um, she's too arrogant to learn from uh, her errors, her ways, it's proprietary. So we were interested in giving a text under which sort of um, taxonomic categorization do they fall into. Right. Why are we interested? So first we started to build the altar shared task we achieve the best performing system, achieve an F1 score of 0 0.105. And that goes back into what Ed Howey said. It's like, I'm more interested to understand why. If a machine, if I just throw transformers, everything into the kitchen sink and say, okay, let it try to do, it still gives an utter shite result. So that led me to go on to work on to find um, annotator agreement level. So in my earlier work, uh, which I presented in cooling is that we were interested in how humans and machines perform. So we have all the machines with their scores. We are interested in how well humans perform. I'll not share the spoiler alert, which I'll show to you in the next slide. And finally, we were looking into aspect-based sentiment analysis. Uh, so folks, aspect-based sentiment analysis is that if you're given like a sentiment, it's like, oh my God, Gordon Ramsay is the best chef ever, uh, but the... Uh, creme brulee is pretty cold. So for instance, you have the food, cold, negative. So that's aspect-based sentiment analysis. But here's what's really interesting, right? So while I was looking at aspect-based sentiment analysis, there had been on a sideline that's been going on on the appraisal literature. So in 2019, um, Sue and Hudson um, proposed that instead of looking at the uh, appraisal taxonomy to have effect, judgment, and appreciation, generally, 
judgment and appreciation can be marked as opinion. Wait. APSA has opinion extraction, aspect extraction. So can we start to use opinion extraction into aspect based, um, into appraisal? Now, what we found out to support that, hey, this is the right direction to do is that when we conducted our earlier study, so what we found out is that, oh, people here, both machines and humans are performing bad. And at this level, where we say whether this given sentence, whether it's judgment or appreciation, both humans and machines are performing equally comparatively. So we took a step back to say, okay, so humans can identify the sentence, whether it's judgment or appreciation, but they can't really pinpoint to what subcategory, even though we try to make sure they're from the same cultural background, they're... Uh, English is their first language. They are well aware of this appraisal framework. Still, there are some differences about that. But we took a step back. We said, okay, humans can identify judgment or appreciation, but can we actually use which word to distinguish um, whether it's judgment or appreciation? Allow me to give some more examples. So this is from the Alta Shared Task 2020. So for instance, Given a sentence, the, the today, for instance, he is a nasty person, it can be normality. And sometimes a certain sentence can have more than one category. Here, we can find humans can tell whether it's judgment or not. If you ask them to do that, poor. If you ask machines to do that, it's poor, but the reasons are different. Machines, we need more data, but it's hard to get data. Even if you get humans who actually know about appraisal, they seem to have different opinion because of different sort of background that, that we are not too sure because this is pretty subjective. So we thought, okay, can we actually find out the word, the exact opinion word? And is it same as aspect-based sentiment analysis, opinion extraction? So what we did is that um, we took two data sets. So this is a common problem in appraisal. Linguists generally don't release their data sets. So I have to literally do a dance and trying to beg people, please send me data sets. But thankfully, there are two publicly available data sets. So one is biography, so it's bio, and it contains uh, biographies of people, short sentences. And the other one is um, uh, psych. So it's basically a, a psychological evaluation between a psychiatrist and a patient. And we created a subset which is known as psych A. The reason why is that when we analyzed bio and psych, we found that uh, bio only contain adjectives and not adverbs. Now, if you're going to compare a system, it has to be apple to apple. So we created psych A. So in psych A, at least we can do like to like comparison when we test with automated approaches. Right, so how did we do it? We treat it as a sequence labeling problem. So given a sentence, in this case, Joker is a villain, we are interested in to extract X. So what's X are the opinion words. So in this case, it could be either judgment or it could be appreciation. But we are interested in finding what are the opinion words. And for this, we decided to take two approach. One is LSTM and the other one um, is Transformers. Now, the approach that we take, it's not something new, not rocket science. Instead, we take existing APSA models that's been in the literature. And we thought of let's apply it to this data set, but right? how well would it work? So, and we also included the current state of the art uh, when we conducted this, which is a bad ups up. So most of the things folks, when you realize when you take people's work, one thing I tend to do is to do a sanity check. So I'm more interested in, can I actually get the same results reproduced in paper? Spoiler alert, no, but quite close because no one shares the finest detail. But we were quite close in to get some of the uh, implementation. So what we did is that we took the original data set of Sam Evel, so which includes restaurants, REST 14, REST 15, Lab 14, ran it through, checked our accuracy score versus what was reported in paper. And in some paper, they give F1 score. So we again calculated the F1 score compared with the original implementation, 
there's some minor differences. I believe this is because of I didn't praise the random number RNG gods properly. So this could be the reasons of this randomness. But again, this are still within the acceptable range. So we then proceeded to do with our work. Right. So here, we thought, wait a second. So SEM eval kind of works. Then what we did was, let's try to re-annotate our data set because it was annotated by an, a, a linguist, but we are interested in testing EPSA opinion extraction on this data set. So what we did is that we got like our three undergraduate students. We followed the guidelines were set by Sam Evel. Can you please specify the opinion? Like given the sentence, can you please tell us what is the opinion word? So we re-annotated our data sets. And what did we find? Okay, so it, bad APSA performs the best. So basically in this case is that we took a model that's been trained on lab 14, rest 14, rest 15, and we evaluate on this appraisal um, data set, right? So we find that bad APSA performs best, especially when it comes to restaurants. So if you notice that restaurants tend to give me a higher score than, um, than um, lab. This is because in the restaurant data set, when we analyzed why, we find that it contains more judgment. So I was looking at the samples of 50 and I was trying to map them to the appraisal framework. Okay, because judgment contains towards people, not towards object. So in this case, what we have noticed is that, hey, for, um, for um, restaurants, things does really work well. So we then, decided to say, okay, does opinion really equals to judgment plus appreciation? Can we actually prove that that's the case? So in this case, we then took the same, um, the newly annotated bio and psych um, data set. We ran it through again. Again, we have noticed similar scores. However, folks, as you have seen earlier, our data set is small. So at first, our statistical, it showed that there's no statistical significance between um, um, opinion and appreciation plus judgment. So it, it didn't show any statistical significance. However, I just wanted to give you a word of caution that we can't be certain. I do not have a very large data set and the statistical power that I have is very low. So, on that terrible disappointment, what we could say is that there are some similarities between APSA and Attitude Branch, so we can use that. We really need larger data set, so thankfully, um, there's recently there's one data set that has been released, and we hopefully, in as part of a future work, we'll look into that, and it's properly annotated, and it's uh, on regarding news articles, and. Secondly, what we are more interested in is that if we could sort of like, um, yes, now so it's, all, it's still judgment, so it's still judgment over there, and um, it will benefit both appraisal and um, the appraisal, uh, it will both benefit appraisal, the uh, systemic functional linguist group, and also APSA. So if we could find some similarities, it will be really, really, really useful. And on that terrible disappointment and time for lunch, I guess, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Though before we run to lunch, uh, we have any questions? Am I thinking about questions? So I had one about you know those results. You're talking about the the restaurants and laptops and so yeah. on. So there's clearly a domain sensitivity in terms of how well the transfer occurs. Yep. How significant do you think that is? Like, do you think? Um, uh, you know, th there'll be as you move to even other domains, the drop will be even more significant. Or is it going to be about this? You could, you know, how bad will it get? Is basically my okay. question. I, I think it's it's really dependent on the data data set because, like for instance, like what we have noticed is like for like biographies, it contains judgment of humans, and and restaurants do have some similarity. It's fine, but let's say if I suddenly talk about spots or completely off and try to use biographies to that, the results will start to fluctuate. So here we are just interested to prove guys, APSA people and the linguist people, 
need to talk because there seems to be an overlap. And this result suggests that we need to work towards that. Cool. Understand better. Okay, so let me check. We have no questions on chat. Yeah. Are there questions in the room? Yes. Thanks for your presentation. Thank you. So my question is, um, um, in which kind of application would you use the output of this? So for example, for recommendation or what examples are for the appraisal, appraisal um, identification or structure? That's, that's a really good question. But what, what we are more interested in, um, I think it goes back to yesterday's talk. There are a few reasons we can use this. One, one thing that really comes out to my mind right now is that judgment if you notice, there's two things. Uh, it's like whether when someone says, for instance, Richard Nixon is a crook, does it have legal implication? Or is it because it's our cultural norms or society that made us to do that sort of statement? Now, if it has legal implication, it can be used towards like hit speed de detection. So we can start to use that. Or for instance, in sarcasm detection, or it's for instance, we can start improving for some downstream application. If we can distinguish that speech has, does it have legal implications or not? Thank you, Pradesh, for the interesting talk. I just have one quick question. What's yeah. the definition of opinion here? It seems to be in the context of reviews, you think opinion equals to aspect sentiment so um, analysis, in, but opinion, in, I think is broader than that. Even if I don't specify specific aspect, you know, like I hate it or I, I regret coming here. You know, that's, that's opinion as yeah. well, right? So I think, you know, like the appraisal framework is broader than ABSA. Yep. Um, so I think the, the problem you're trying to establish, you know, is in the context of reviews, you think ABSA equals uh, the, uh, the opinion frame, you know, the appraisal framework. Um, yeah, or well, what's your comment on the opinion? I think, you know, it seems to have adopted a very yeah. strict definition. That's a very, very good question, Jenny. I mean, you, you are right in a way that opinion has a lot of things, but here we try to narrow the focus because we were much more interested to find out like, okay, it's, it's, it's attitude here. Uh, that means when I have opinions about humans and also on, um, on objects, because that's where today aspect-based sentiment, it's like, it's just kind of focused, but can this sub-branch of uh, appraisal equals to that? I'm just trying to establish that, but you're right. It's more broader sort of spectrum and there is no right or wrong definition, but here I just want to hopefully to encourage these two communities to work together so that the application can start to spread. So it's like at Hobie's message, it's like instead of focus on this, we need to look at the why's to start to expand further, so yes. Okay, well, let's thank Pradesh again. Thank you. Great talk.